white box. Chromosome. The lights hurt my eyes. They're always too bright. I tried asking the guards to turn them down once. They just ignored me and hit me when I insisted. So the lights are still too bright, and they sting reflecting off the walls of the white box. Were they always this bright? <laughs> I can't remember. I can't remember much nowadays. I can't even remember how many steps it takes to get from the cot to the wall, even though I just counted. The lights really hurt my eyes. Suddenly, I bolt upright. Name. Name! Rolling out of my cot, I trot anxiously to the opposite end of the white box and peer down into the corner. Squinting my eyes against the painful light, I try to read the rough scratch marks. Canvas. 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 I read it several times, just to make sure that I get the word in my head. No, it's not a word. It's a name. Canvas. My name is Canvas. I try to say it out loud. Instead, a feeble croak leaves my throat. I cough out the dust and try again. Canvas! I say out loud, and I flinch. My own voice scares me. I suppose I deserve it, though. I'm a bad pony, after all. I don't deserve any comfort. Not even my own. Because only bad ponies end up here. I read the words scratched into the wall one last time, and then, satisfied trot back over to my cot. The sound of my hooves striking the floor is like hollow bones, the noise echoing off the walls as I take exactly twelve steps from the wall back to my bedding. I've counted those steps so many times, trying again and again to make sure I'd gotten it right, but I'm still not too sure. Maybe I'll go back and count them again later, or maybe I should make sure that I remember my name, if only for a little bit longer. Or I could sleep, or eat, or drink, or do nothing at all. There's too much to do in the white box. My ears perk involuntarily as a series of bolts and latches are pulled back, and I turn to face that corner. A small rectangular hole that never seems to be in the same place slides open perfectly against the wall of the white box. Then, gliding from the void beyond the corner, a metal tray filled with packaged plastic food slips through and clatters to the floor. And then the hole is gone. And it's just me and the tray. And the white box. I don't eat yet. <laughs> There's too much to do. Yes! All of them! Don't question it. Just do as you're told. Right away, sir! Prisoner 167, get up immediately! I'm ripped from the bosom of deep, dark sleep as a hoof strikes me sharply in the ribs. The pain is nothing compared to the loud voices. I look up to the disapproving eyes of a scowling Pegasus guard, dressed in a tight-fitting white vest and leg band. I said immediately, repeats the guard angrily, another sharp prod as I gingerly uncurl myself from my cot and put my hose on the ground. His voice is too loud to ignore. Being pushed forward, I realize in my numb, muddled state of half-sleep, that corner is now gone, and opened wider than when the trays come through. Another guard, somehow perfectly identical to the one pressing me toward the gaping, unfamiliar doorway, stands there impassively, his cold stare locked with mine. I look away from him as I'm forced out of the white box. The commotion hurts my head. There's far too much to do to deal with this now. I'm led to what the guards like to call the roundup. It's just another big white box where all the little white boxes attach. The lights here aren't so bright, so it's not too bad. But now I'm not alone out here. I'm shoved into a line alongside several other ponies I vaguely recognize. There's a stallion with the guitar on his flank, whose name I think is Smooth Song. He has distant, sad eyes and a bandana tied over his mouth. He told me once that he played music. I don't know what that was. I still don't. Then there's the blank flank. He's a tall, handsome pony with fur and a horn that's as white as the boxes. I don't remember his name, but I do remember the guards calling him an albino unicorn or something along those lines. His eyes are scary, but they're blindfolded right now anyways. And the pony next to me, her name is Forte. I've never heard her say a word before, but that doesn't bother me at all. We'd met each other briefly before, but I can't remember when. I feel like I'm about to remember when one of the guards starts shouting at us again. Listen up, you lot, he barks. 
And listen well. You sorry sacks are going to be meeting someone new, and you'd better be polite, or I promise that your life here will be getting far more miserable than it already is. None of us say anything. It's smart not to talk when guards are talking unless they ask for it. But I'm not sure what he means by miserable. What's there to be upset about? With a satisfied grunt, the noisy guard steps aside, allowing some pony to step forward. She isn't white like the boxes. I immediately don't like her. The pony had a straight-cut mane with streaks running through it. A horn protruded from her neat coif. She wore a white saddlebag with a strange-looking shape on it that I'd never seen before. It only made me like her less. She gives us all a polite nod. Her eyes turn to mine, and I pretend I don't notice, looking past her at the white wall instead. This is Miss Twilight Sparkle, continues the noisy guard, introducing the strange new pony. She's a student under our great Princess Celestia, and for some reason she's decided to volunteer her valuable time to deal with you scum. So I don't want to see any sort of bad behavior from any of you towards her, and you better appreciate this honor. Anyways, says the noisy guard, clearing his throat, <clears throat> she's going to start paying the lot of you visits in your cells. Any questions she asks, you answer. Anything she wants to know, you tell her. Are we understood? There was silence, to which the noisy guard gave a satisfied nod and a low grunt. Some invisible signal was given, and the other guards started prodding us away back to our boxes. I cast a lingering glance to the new pony that was now talking to the noisy guard. She wasn't white like the boxes. I didn't want her to come into mine. Time passes, and I forget about the strange pony, at least for a while. But eventually, that corner opens again while I'm busy counting the number of steps from the wall to the cot, and a guard enters. Not saying a word, he simply jerks his head toward my bedding, telling me to sit down. I do so, and he takes a pair of cuffs and slides them around one of my hooves, with the other one anchored to the bed's frame. Stepping back towards the wall, he watches me carefully as that pony, Twilight something or other, trots into the room. She gives me what seems a forced smile and waits for a moment. Turning her head to the stoic guard, she gives him a slight nod. Reluctantly, he leaves through the doorway. I hear him mutter something about a vegetable before he seals behind him. And then it's just me and the pony I don't like, and the white box. The lights hurt my eyes. She glances around the room, and when our stairs meet, she gives me another fake smile. I don't say anything, nor do I look at her. I'm trying to remember how many steps it takes to get from the cot to the wall, because I didn't get to finish counting. She introduces herself. So, hello there. I'm Twilight Sparkle, and you are... Her expression turns to one of concentration as she levitates a clipboard from her saddlebag with her glowing horn and flips through it. Ah, Prisoner 167, am I correct? I nod, but I don't look at her. With a nervous cough, she flips through the clipboard again, levitating a quill out of her bag as she takes a seat on the white floor. Now then, let's start off simple. How are you feeling? She asks me, trying to stir some kind of conversation. I don't like this pony, but I don't forget what the noisy guard had told us. Fine, I answer. My voice almost makes me flinch again, but I control myself this time. I stare at my hooves and impatiently wait for her to finish questioning me. Fine? Okay, then. Prisoner 167, would you like to tell me why it is you're here? She asks, apparently oblivious to my blunt response. I'm here because I did something bad. Something bad? Can you remember what that was? No. That's the truth. How can you not remember how you got yourself in here? I don't know how to answer that. It's just a fact. There's no explanation for it. I shrug. So, how long have you been here? Her voice sounds a little more strained this time. I don't know. This is sort of a lie. But that's only because I don't really know what long means. Her nose wrinkles in frustration as she blows a strand of her mane back into place. Well, can you at least tell me what you did before you got here? She asks, 
not disguising the annoyance in her tone. Now this is a question I don't know the answer to. I don't understand what this pony means. Before? There is no before. It's always been the white boxes. And what does she mean by here? There's nothing but the white boxes. This pony makes no sense, and I hate her more and more, and I just want her to leave. So I tell her no. The pony heaves a sigh of heavy frustration and looks like she's going to ask me another question, but instead she just gets up with an irritated expression on her brow and slips the quill and clipboard back into her saddlebag. Knocking at that corner, it opens briefly and swallows her up. The guard comes and takes off my cuffs. Once he's gone, I get up and start counting the steps again. I don't see that strange pony for a long time, and I'm very happy about it. Her questions were pointless and didn't make sense. They made my head hurt, too. I almost forgot my name again. I run to the corner and read Canvas again over and over to make sure that I remember it a little longer. My brain scares me sometimes. It's like it wants me to forget, but I can't let it forget my name. I don't know why I care. It's just a word, isn't it? And yet, something brings me back to that corner every time I fear that I'm about to lose it. I repeat the name under my breath a few more times. Suddenly, I feel something, and I jump with surprise as a hoof pokes me in the side. In moments, I'm cuffed to my bed as that annoying pony walks in again. She looks about as happy to see me as I am to see her. Her expression indifferent, she sits on the ground without saying a word. Taking out the same clipboard and quill, she starts asking me meaningless questions again. Do you like the food? Do you know the ponies around here? Are the guards nice? I answer them all in succession with complete nonchalance, but they don't stop coming. I keep hoping that she'll give up and leave like the last time, but she's determined to stay for some reason, even as my answers become mumbled and indistinct. There's a light snapping sound as her quill presses into the paper, and a black smear drips to the floor. Seeing that black spot on the floor of the white box made me want to hurt this pony. I decided it's smarter to just bite my lip and not get in any trouble. The guards would be merciless. Cursing quietly, the strange pony levitates a small glass bottle and another quill from her saddlebag. From the bottle emerges a tiny stick covered in something white, and she rubs it on the clipboard, as well as onto the black stain on the ground. It becomes white. I can't remember the last time I've been so amazed. What was that? I blurt as the pony put her quill into the paper again. My voice makes her flinch. What was what? She responds, confused, but more so surprised that I had spoken out of turn. The white thing that you put on the stain. Puzzled, she raises the glass bottle. What? This? This is whiteout. It's for correcting mistakes. I like that, I say quietly, mesmerized by the bottle. I like that a lot. Something that makes white. This is magic beyond my imagining. The pony smiles, amused. Do you really like the color white or something? Finally, a question I want to answer. I tell her yes. She asks me why I like it. I ask her what reason there is not to like it. She doesn't have an answer for that. So tell me, Prisoner 167, why do you like white, but not me? Why won't you be more cooperative? I feel that I have no choice but to answer honestly, although the answer seems self-evident. You aren't white. Well, no, I'm not white. I'm sort of purple, I guess, she says, looking at her fur. She then points at me. But you aren't white either. Do you not like yourself? No, I don't. Maybe you're being unreasonable. I mean, after all... Most ponies aren't white. That tall one is. Who? Princess Celestia? No, not her. Don't say her name. I say harshly, feeling something rise in me. I mean the one with the scary eyes. Oh, Clarity! exclaims Twilight, remembering the prisoner. Well, that isn't the same. He's an albino and doesn't have any pigmentation. So yes, he is white, but that doesn't make him better or worse than any pony else. I try to tell her that isn't true, but for some reason the words die in my throat, and I look down and stare at my hooves again. 
The pony coughs and tries to continue the conversation by returning to a familiar topic. What about your cell? It's white. Do you like it as well? Yes, I like it very much, I tell her. Then I change my answer. Actually, not always. The lights hurt my eyes. They're too bright. But otherwise, I love it here. I have everything. I have white. I have my name written in the corner. And I have so many things to do. The strange pony doesn't say anything. She simply looks at me curiously. This time, instead of looking away, I look right back at her. Her eyes are strange and alien, yet alluring. I can't put my hoof on why that is, but I hadn't seen it before. Sheepish, the pony with the strange eyes looks away and begins packing her things. It was lovely to speak with you, Prisoner 167. I look forward to doing it again. Canvas, I state, as she's about to knock on that corner. She stops and turns. Sorry? My name is Canvas. She gives me another awkward smile. Very well then, Canvas. Thanks for the talk. You're welcome, Miss Twilight Sparkle. After she leaves, I don't move for a while. I just sit and think about that magical whiteout. And then I think about the strange pony's eyes. I spend so much time lost in thought that I don't even have time to count the steps from the wall to the cot. 